is that? You really get to look at What one is that? Eleven.
Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, and I promise Him that I, I would serve Him till I die. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I was alone and I know I was a sinner too. But I heard a voice from heaven say, There is work to do. And I took my master's hand and joined that heavenly band. Now I'm on a battlefield for my Lord. Yeah, yes, and I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, and I promised Him that I, I would serve Him till I die. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And when I meet the Savior, I'll meet Him with a smile. And know me as a child Around the throne of grace He poured my soul astray Now I'm on a battlefield for my Lord Yeah, yes, and I'm on the battlefield for my Lord Yeah, yes, I'm on battlefield for my Lord. Well, and I promise Him that I, I would serve Him till I die. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, and I promise Him that I, I would serve Him till I die.
when you were preaching this morning uh, when you that scripture where it talked about the boldness I began to think about you was asking some of the things that have happened since we were here last year man there's been so much um, we've been into several different prisons we went to Angola with the Louisiana Baptist Convention was in there for two days and uh Man saw God work in a mighty way. And I just want to tell you, God is using the prison system to create revival. You may not realize that. But in the Angola State Prison down in Angola, Louisiana, they have a, the, the New Orleans Seminary is there. And they have a seminary on site. And they're, the men who get saved that surrender into the ministry are getting trained right there in the prison. And there are preachers and missionaries that are being sent out from the prison to go into other prisons to win the lost. Amen. I'm going to tell you, I've never seen anything like it. There's 5,200 inmates in Angola. It's 5,200 men there at Angola. Angola covers approximately 18,000 acres and is 23 miles around it, surrounded by the Mississippi River on three sides and the Tunica Hills on the other side. It's down in a bowl almost. Out of the 5,200 men, they say that 47% of the population is born again, sold out for Jesus Christ. Don't you wish we had that in church today? Amen. Amen. And as we went cell to cell and visited with the men, I want to tell you that bless my heart because we'd get there and I, I'd say, how are you doing? they say, oh, let me tell you what God has done to, in my life. And I'm like, no, that's my job. I'm supposed to tell you that over and over. Probably 80% of the people we talked to greeted us with the love of God. 60% of that group was either in a Bible study of some sort. 
20 to 30 percent was enrolled in seminary. I, I, I want to tell you, I was blown away at what God can do and what he is doing right there in prison. We saw that weekend, we saw 250 plus accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen. We've been into the Bayou Dorchy Correctional Facility down at Dixie Inn, Louisiana. The first night we were there, we had the opportunity to see 48 men accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. They asked us to come back on Thursday night, wasn't it? And, you know, I want to tell you this. When you think that there's no way that you can reach somebody because it, the focus has turned away from God, the gentleman that got up and spoke and shared the gospel, he was an All-American football player. He's from Ruston. I can't even recall his. Fred Dean, I believe. And he was in there and preached. We, he got through preaching. They stood up and gave him a, a standing ovation. I understand that. And I thought, Lord, because he had told us, he said, you guys go ahead and do the invitation. Now, if I'd have listened to Satan, he was sitting there saying, it's over. It's over. You don't have to do anything else. It's over. But we started singing, and we went into an invitation. Now, here's the thing, and this is what I want you to catch. When you think that God is not, it, it, not working, realize he is working because 78 men accepted Jesus Christ Amen. that night. Amen. See, it wasn't about us and it wasn't about Fred Dean. It was about the gospel. And see, it would have been real easy for me to say, oh, it's over with and done. But the warden down there, John Lewis, phenomenal man of the Lord, loves the Lord. There was 410 men packed in a room that holds 268. Some of those men stood up for two hours in the back. There was one person of the prison in there, the warden, sitting on the stage with us. I want to tell you, nobody got out of line. I want to tell you, when the gospel is being preached, there's a reverence that automatically comes when the presence of God is there. We've been all over the place in revivals, getting to see God move in mighty ways and use each one of us in specific ways that we never dreamed. But as you begin to talk about boldness in your message today, back in April, was 1st of May, we were in the, the Baton Rouge area doing a revival, and some friends of ours carried us to New Orleans down to the French Quarter to eat lunch at Bub, Bubba Gump Shrimp. We wanted to go eat down there. So after eating, we decided to walk down to Jackson Square. How many of you ever been to Jackson Square? Anybody here ever been to Jackson Square? That's all right. You ain't missed a whole lot, okay? Um, we, we went down there, went into the big cathedral, beautiful building, but that's about all you can say about it. We came out, and as we came out, over on this side, there was a little street band over there playing a song, and I listened to the song, and I said, Jonathan, listen to that. He listened to me, and I said, the song was, Where Could I Go But To The Lord? All jazzed up. I mean, they were just, and there was folks over there with them. And so we turned to, to go around. We was headed to the French market, walking down through there. And as we turned, while we was inside the cathedral, there had been a tent set up kind of right in front of the cathedral there off to the side. And there was this guy sitting out there on the tent hauling readings, readings, readings. And he was very obnoxious, loud with his barking that he was doing. And we was all kind of in a, we wasn't wadded up together walking. Uh, uh, Steve and John and Stephen were kind of walking. Then our friends Sue and Mike were kind of all up in there. And Penny and I were kind of behind them. And I'm a very passive person. And as we got close to this guy, this guy was hollering this just over and over and over. And Brother Tommy, we got right in front of him and something come over me that all I can say was the Holy Spirit. Because I looked at him and I said, a reading on Jesus Christ. And he said, oh, you're one of those. I said, you betcha. 
He said, you're a hypocrite. He said, you know Jesus wasn't white. I said, duh, if you knew where he came from, you'd know that too. And he's just, yeah, 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 constantly just fussing, going back and forth. And I equated to, to like one of the Star Trek. How many of you remember Star Trek, the old show? And they'd holler, shields, you know, and that shield that show it come up on that, uh, on the Enterprise. Well, about that time, I felt like that that's what happened with us. It's like a big angel come and he just hugged us up. And this guy was hollering and he was barking and everything. And we got about from here to the, going out into the foyer there. And I turned to him and I said, on the blood of Jesus Christ to wash your sins away. Boy, it fired him up even more. We got to get boldness. See, that wasn't me. Amen. That was the Holy Spirit that came upon me. And that guy, I want to tell you, was from the pits of hell. His eyes burned. He had old long hair, black fingernails. He was from the pits of hell. If he had been there to make a buck, Brother Anthony, he'd have turned his attention to somebody else. He wasn't there to make a buck. He was there to disrupt Jesus Christ. Amen. He knew that in that wad of folks that was walking by, see... You may not realize this, but when you are born again and you're saved, there's a presence about you Amen. that Satan knows because it's in the Bible all the way through it. Anytime Jesus would walk into the room and if there was a demonic spirit, they would cry out, Son of God, the Most High, what is, don't bother me. They recognized him. See, this guy recognized. It wasn't me. He recognized Jesus. Amen. We have to present ourselves. When the opportunity arises. Yesterday we, we were coming in and we had stopped to, at McDonald's to get some ice cream. Amen. Amen. And uh, we, we were there and Steve had asked for something or another. And they went and asked the manager. And she said, no, we can't do that. And Steve said, well, what if we pray? And she, we all thought she was saying, oh, we don't do that. But she was responding that they don't mix the the ice cream the way that he wanted it anymore and so immediately I thought surely this lady said we couldn't pray and so as she was give, giving us our stuff the girl at the counter she recognized she said have y'all ever sung at Brother Van's church and we said oh yeah we've been out there several times and she said I knew I knew y'all and about that time Steve said there ain't nobody in here let's sing so we gathered up. Let's sing right quick. We'll show them what, what we sang. Come on. got to be prepared. The Bible says to be ready in season and out of season. That's to present the gospel whether it be through a song and, a and after we got through the lady come forward and she said oh my gosh she said that was so awesome and she said well I got to get you to my church and she named her pastor's name and this and that. See because in my mind what I heard brother Anthony was that she didn't want no prayer but that was totally wrong. See when the gospel is presented those that know the Lord should stand up. Amen. Should come forth. And God is so awesome. I, I want to tell you, we were up at the National Quartet Convention, and we, we saw a lot of things. We saw a lot of groups. We saw a lot of folks. But I want to tell you, each one of them, just like you and I, they need Jesus in their life. Amen. And as on Monday, as we got there, I, I want to tell you what the Lord impressed on me. As we got there on Monday, he said, look, the fields are ripe with harvest. 
as you looked across that sea of people that come to hear good gospel music that probably attend a church somewhere but do you know what the percentages are right now in the United States of America in our church over less than 20 to 25 percent of the church role is born again Amen. they're members of a church somewhere but don't truly know the Lord they know the name as you preached Amen. they know the name but they don't know him personally and I want to tell you there's going to be a lot of folks standing at the judgment that was up there at that quartet convention that hooped and they might have raised their hand and got excited about the song and how great the voices were that sung it. In that day when he says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Amen. See, knowing Jesus is the most important thing in your life. Knowing that you know him, as the old preachers used to say when I grew up, that you know, that you know, that you know where you're going to spend eternity. So I want to tell you, God's good. He is, you can say he ain't work working, but he's working. And he's looking for folks that'll say yes and that I'll go and do what you want me to do. Now, it doesn't mean that you've got to buy a bus and hit the road. I'm not saying that. Just do what he tells you to do, to pick up the phone, call that person that's in need. Go by and knock on that door and say, hey, I missed you at church. You okay? Can I do something for you? Go up to that person in Walmart that you see has got their head hung low. Put your arm around and say, hey, you got a moment. I just want to pray for you. God put you on my heart. It's boldness. And he'll use each one of us if we'll just allow him to. And that's what he's, that's what he's commanded us to do. And, uh, and so, yes, we are excited. I'm going to tell you, we're excited about what he's done and, and who he is. And uh, this, this particular song that we, we want to do is... Is one that Jonathan wrote on the way back from uh, West Virginia. Uh, we were coming back from up there in June, and he was back there in the bus, and the Lord began to give him a, a song. And, um, you know, uh, we sang this one up there at the, the quartet convention, and uh, we, in Philippians 2, verse 9, it says, and he was exalted and given a name above all names. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. The one who died. He saved my And he gave me sight And he's come back one day When that trumpet will blow This man who died will save your he will call you home. He may have problems that you don't understand. Just call on the master. He'll calm the storm with his hand. Just fall on your face and cry out to him to help me through this man who died. We'll save your life and be right there. He's 
you glad that he'll never let you go once he gets you he gets you and you accept him as lord and savior of your life he wraps that grip around you and holds on to you oh i want us to sing this song i'm ready to go come on son it all started with promise that one day the son of god will come I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm 
world behind It may be a morning, night, or noon Oh, it just can't come too soon Cause I know, I know I'm ready to go Yes, I know, I know
kind of
one more song for you, and then I uh, can't hear the way to hear the word again, brother. And uh, you know, we're commanded to go out and to compel them to come into the house of the Lord. And there was 14 that watched the message this morning via the internet. You might say, well, that's not a lot. I want to tell you that is a lot. Because if one of those 14 accepts Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, all of heaven rejoices. That's another avenue that the Lord has blessed us with this year is to be able to, to stream these services. And over 90% of them, we get the opportunity to stream them over the Internet. And that's just 14 folks that wasn't sitting in here that heard now, they might not have watched it all the way through, but I pray that they heard the word and that their hearts were convicted and that they accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We want to sing this song for you that talks about, I wished I'd have lived. And each one of us would say, we wished we'd have lived better years ago. Each one of us would say, I wish I'd have walked closer to the Lord. Listen to the message of this song. It just simply says, I wish I'd lived. that 